might be watching this video thinking why am i here talking to you well i have a couple words to say to you if you think that god does not love you because that's not true i have two words to say to you stop it life you will struggle in life you will come to your with ends in life you will see that there is so much more than what meets the eye and what meets the what more beats the eye is the one and only savior jesus christ he's everything that this world has to offer he is amazing righteous beautiful amazing outstanding and sin free he is the most lovable person you'll ever meet the person that actually answers your prayers when you're down at your lowest he will bring you up to your highest he is the most lovable person you'll ever talk to he made the lands he made the trees he made the birds he made the bees he made everything you just need to see that and when you see and accept jesus christ you will finally see what he has to offer for you you will see everything in the way he sees it he will always love you and eventually you'll know that this is sharing the gospel a lot to say when it comes to god and christians some christians definitely believe that god loves them and some christians don't believe that god loves them and that's okay but I want you guys to know that God 100% does love you. Even I struggle with the fact that if God does not love me, I feel like some of the stuff that happens in my life doesn't happen to other people. But in a way, it definitely does. Maybe not the same thing, but the exact same emotions and the exact same type of road that that took them off of kind of happens to all of us. We all have our struggles. We all sin. We all watch stuff we're not supposed to. We all do stuff we aren't supposed to that would not be Christian worthy. But that doesn't make God love us any less because we all are equally. And sometimes you have to always hit the brake in life and think about your decisions. And then once you hit that pedal button, you're back on the track. And that's kind of what God does. He makes us think about what we're doing. If once we get off track, he makes us have a break. And then we can finally get back on track to where we need to be. Because God loves us no matter who we are. No matter what we do. No matter our sins. God loves us no matter what. It is pretty difficult to, uh, you know, you know, fathom that God loves us. Because, again, it's like some of us do sins that are so unforgettable to us that it's like, why would God, the creator of the planet, creator of the world, the creator of us, the person that sacrificed his life to save us, for us to be here, to be able to be sinning, but actually be forgiven? He doesn't want us to sin. So people are probably thinking, well, if, if we sin, then why does he love us? Because even if we were to sin, that doesn't make God ha hate us or love us any less. Because God loves us no matter what the circumstance is so thinking that god hates us when he doesn't that's not true because god will always love us no matter what we do we may think what we do is 10 times worse than what it is god still loves us because he thinks we he knows that we have a purpose on this planet he knows we have a voice and that voice is to share the gospel and that's what i'm doing on this series is to show you that no matter what you do in life no matter what road you go down God will always be there for you. He may not support the road you go down. If it's a bad road, he won't support it. But he still cares. He doesn't love us any less if we don't pay attention to him. He wants us to pay attention to him, though. He'll get very upset, but he isn't going to forget us or just, you know, just get rid of us or just stop caring about us. God does not do that. He cares no matter what we do. But what we do down here depends if we go up to heaven or to hell. So if you want to go to heaven, let's do things that God would want us to do. Because if we don't, then that's showing that we don't really have true feelings for God. Because last episode, I said this. It's the fact that if we're letting it over, just like we keep on doing it. Now, there's a difference between asking God for forgiveness, but where you actually mean it, rather than just saying it so then you can keep on doing it. So, if you're doing it again and again and again, but you're actually at least trying and you're meaning it,
then God won't have a problem with it. He'll still want you to try even harder to quit the sin altogether. But if you're trying and still doing it, that's a pretty natural response because your body can't just automatically quit a sin if you're in a, if it's a sin that you're addicted to. There's many addictions. I'm not going to go down the road that you can be addicted to that would be against God's will. But it's just the fact that if you're letting it like where every like every single minute you're sinning or every single day you're sinning and not apologizing or apologizing but not meaning it and just using God's for your advantage, then that's not good. So if you're literally just saying, all right, I'm sorry, God, but you're not meaning it, and you're just saying so that you can have an excuse of doing it and doing it again and again, that's not the God's way of living, okay? And that's the exact same thing that I'm going to be saying in today's video. If you're not a true Christian, God will see that. If you're using him to his advantage, to your advantage, he'll see that. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing that, but in reality, I'm not. I'm really trying to stop my sinning, and it's so difficult. And it's kind of crazy, like me, I personally want to share what I think on camera. I'm not afraid to share that I sin. I'm not ashamed of that. We all sh we all sin. I'm, a I'm actually ashamed of sinning. I'm not ashamed of telling you guys it, because the more you, because you can't, heal what you don't reveal so if you reveal that you sin you might be able to be to the next step of getting help and that's by letting god control your life to the point where he will tell you what to do where to go when you need to go there because god loves us no matter what we do but it depends if we take his advice when we need it the most to change our life around and if you guys have fear of dying i have that all oh, i got that 10 times worse than anyone in my family for sure I fear that God will take me when I'm not ready. I'm ashamed. I am a fear that God will take me before I even share or before I even change to being like, okay, like where I'm a real Christian. I'm a real Christian, but I have the, the thing of like, I'm going to die before I can prove to God that I am heaven worthy or that I am a Christian worthy person, that I really believe in him. I feel like with all the bad decisions I've made in 15 years, that if I were to die now, then God will never love me and he will get me to hell. So I fear the fact that if I die now, then I never made something of myself and that I will always be what kids always told me, a failure. And I fear that every day that when, if I die now, that I proved everybody right, that I'm a failure, that I'm nobody, that I'm someone that's not worthy of loving. And I fear that every day that I can't be somebody if I die now. I want a future. I see a future. I want that future. So I'm going to reach out to God through this video to help me. So let me pray for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to myself, to you, to everybody watching this video, that you put them on the right path to heaven. You put them on the right path that they belong, the right path that you see them on, the path that suits them the best. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you that I get the help that I need to stop sinning and to stop worrying so that I can actually live a life of no fear the way that you intended my life to be. No fear the way I lived years ago before my grandfather died. I pray to you that I get to see something of myself in the future and I get to live that life that I've always intended myself to live through your name. And for everybody else watching this video to see that you really are there for them when they feel like you aren't. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Let's get to Bible verses of the day. This is Corinthians 2, verse, well, chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. Please be praised to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles. So this is just showing you to just, he's going to be there through us and to comfort us through our trouble. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 1, 4, 16 through 19 And so we know and reply on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. First Peter 5 through 7 cast all your worries on him because he cares for you. Psalms 136 26 give thanks to the God of heaven. He love his love endures forever. So you, you have to take a consideration. God loves us. No matter what we go through, God's there. He may not show signs right off the bat because he wants us to also deal with stuff because again that makes us stronger. 
and it connects us closer to God. Because if we reach out God for help, we're literally giving Him attention that He wants from us. Because He wants us to reach out to Him. Because He has what we need for us to get the help that we so desirely pray for. Whatever we pray for, God will answer if it's reasonably and not something that God can see that we're taking advantage of Him. So if we reach out for help, God will help us. May not first right off the bat, likely not right off the bat, but eventually He will see that we need the help. And when He gives us the help, we're going to feel so much better in the long run. So guys, I got a future ahead.